Just know it.
Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, before we start, I just want to sing two songs from our New Day songbook to begin the service. We start off in number 21, one that everybody knows, even though you don't have the New Day. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. One second. Thank you. 
service could you all start The Lord be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Elmo for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, and give life, and the giver of life, that we will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Elmo, 
We thank you for giving him to us, his family and his friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are united with you and with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. We will now have the tributes at this time. We have the first tribute by Brian Beckham. with me 
and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. I stayed in the garden with him, through the night around us before him, and he bids me go to the voice of all his song to me is calling and he walked with me and he talked with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry here no other has ever known and the joy we share as we tarry there no other has ever known Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. For those who may not know, Elmore was my first cousin. Anybody here didn't know that? Well, all you know now. Elmore's father was my uncle. My father was Elmore's uncle. It's my elder sister. We didn't practice any song. <laughs> she watched me about it. When I brought the book and showed her the song that we ought to sing. We slept in the same house last night. We came up in the can. I just dropped it on her there. So we're going to render a song. I pray that your hearts will be blessed. Amen. Amen. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry of the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I walk beside him. step is getting brighter as the golden scale I climb. Every burden's getting lighter. Every cloud is silver line. Where the sun is always shining to dim the eye and the ending of the rainbow where the mountains touch the sky anything about tomorrow I don't see I don't know 
about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one to stand by me. And the part that is my portion may be through the flames of love, but his presence calls before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't see. Now open the floor for any other tributes, anyone who's willing to make a tribute at this point in time. Okay, then we will now have the eulogy. Good afternoon, church. It is always a pleasure, no matter the circumstances, to be in the house of the Lord and we give thanks and praise him, man. As a young man growing up in the village of Roxborough, I have known Elmore, better known as Natty, first encounter with this gentleman was when I was a wee little lamb, the village of Roxborough. Those days, the preferred team, football team in Roxborough would have been Roxborough Playboys. And I remember my father carrying me. For those of you who don't know, the late Cutbutt Mothers, more fondly known as Shake Me Tail or the Mighty Hunter. And we were at Louido watching the football. And one thing is that Natty, as we would popular call him, was a fever and supporter of any team in Roxborough, and therefore I was at that game and things were not going too well for the Roxborough team and Nate at the top of his voice shouted to one of the players on the field, cough him in the face and let me start a fight and I remember 
being taken aback by the statement as a young kid. But it shows not really, and I want us to focus not on the violent part of it, but the favor and support that was given to the team. And that would have encapsulated this gentleman's aura in the village of Roxborough. Not really a man to mingle too much, but will always give his opinion, and his opinion was his opinion. And at the end of the day, you cannot fault a man for his opinion, whether you agreed with it or not. That was his opinion, and that is philosophy, or his opinion of life was to work hard, stay in your lane basically, love who love you, and continue to live. Recently, I would have moved to this part of Roxborough from up the road, as we would say. And this part of Roxborough, I must say, is, yes, all. <laughs> This part of Roxbury is a blessed part. Quiet side. Quiet side. Everybody, for everyone on this side. So I know that Natty lived in company with very good people. His very good friend would have passed recently. And so we are happy that they are happily reunited. Ladies and gentlemen, Elmo was one of us. He lived his life. And we can all be so lucky to live the kind of life or the length of life that Elmo would have lived. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to pray for his family. Continue to support his family. And I say thank you for the opportunity. here has left me speechless because he has said everything that I was going to say. And I think I, did, I should not walk in the church with him. But I was just sharing with him a little thing, so take it in for. Nevertheless, um, Elmo, you know him as Natty, I know him as Talax. That's the man, Talax. And he spoke everything about the guy. Very defiant. Very, very defiant. Right? But he stood for what he believed in, right? Yeah. I had my little experience with him as a little boy growing up. We used to play cricket right on, in front of Catholic churches. Sometimes we used to come up here and make real noise. On the, and one evening, I was so passionate about the game, and somebody bat a ball along by the Haman tree. I don't know if you all know the Haman tree there, and I run down, trying to get a run out. And when I felt this wind ball, Talax is passing, and the ball hit him. And Talax take up a big stone and drive and hit me right here. Tip, Valman, all kind of big person did it, and the place went silent. And that just shake his head and just keep walking good up the road. <laughs> no one said anything. I held that in my mind for years. I said, I will hit him at a big stone. <laughs> when he fell ill, he came out by an archery shop. He came to get some grocery, but they didn't have it there. And he say, I said, well, go up by Hollis. And he said, he can't make that walk up there. I said, well, let me go for it for you. I said, although he hit me the big stone some years ago, <laughs> I would still go for it for you because I forgive you. And you know, he tried to turn around and tell me, I watched him and felt the stone and hit him. <laughs> that is the kind of person he was. But nevertheless, he was a good person around. He worked again for years. I never seen him with a big bag of provision coming over. I never seen him with a big bunch of cane. He always had this little bucket. And I always wondering, what is man working again only, only bringing a bucket of cane? But there are people who could attest that they would bring, he would bring three pounds of dashin, three planting to their home from his garden. He was just doing things his way. And according to 
my colleague, let us support the family, let us support them in the time of grief. He's in a better place than he was just before. Thank you. Amen. We will now have the eulogy by Miss Monique Gardner. Good afternoon, Church. Elmore Gardiner, or Gardner, as most people pronounce it, also known as Talox or Tulux, was born on October 8, 1958. He was the son of Joseph Gardiner and Otilda Reed Gardiner, both deceased, and the ninth of 12 children. At the age of five years, his educational background was forged when he attended the Roxborough Anglican School, attaining full primary education. Later, he sought to further develop himself by pursuing a course in carpentry at the Presto Presto Youth Camp, located in Balmain Village, Trinidad. However, one might think that Elmo would be a carpenter. Far from it. Elmo had a passion for gardening which manifested from him going to the garden every Friday after school with his brothers and father. As a result, Elmore could be seen returning from the garden with bunches of plantain and bags of dashin that he would sell to the public in front of Miss Ernesto's home. Another popular produce was oak rose. He was never selfish as he always shared his produce with others, as the gentleman just said. Asha was not to be left out after she one day confronted him and accused him of taking all the produce from the home of Candice and she did not partake of any. He was very helpful and kind-hearted. He loved and cared for his family and the few friends that he was known to have. Elmo had a hot mouth. He was not afraid to let one know how he felt when he was displeased of anything especially after consuming the alcohol which he loved, punching to be exact. Boy, he was loud in his expressions. He could also be described as strong-headed, since he must win every argument believing that his opinion was always right. That was Elmo. Moreover, he never liked people calling him Talax. He would say proudly, my name is Elmo Boy, Permit me to share some fond memories of him. When Candice would accompany him to the health center and the doctor would inquire of him whether he drinks plenty of water, he would reply, buckets of water. <laughs> Candice would get in the conversation and respond, no, he doesn't. To which Elmo would have said, Candice, don't cross me. So on returning home, Candice would ensure that he had enough water to drink, separate from water, to wash his hands in a container. Guess what? Elmo would use the drinking water to wash his hands instead of the water in the, in the bucket, trying to con Candice to believe that he drank the water. Talk about tricks. Elmo had many tricks up his sleeve, as we would say. Who likes to take medication? Well, Elmo was no different. He would often say that the medicines were killing him and would refuse, refuse to take them and would remark, you would have to put it down my throat. It would take Kweasi, his nephew, to have him comply. His niece, Asher, would recall that when Elmo saw her firstborn for the first time, he exclaimed, you have a baby with five faces. He resembles both parents, both grandfathers, and his uncle Kweasi. Elmo was a comedian. There was never a dull moment with him around. He would either say or do something that would make you laugh. When cleaning his room one day, out of nowhere, Elmo shouted, 
Asha move your sexy self from in front of me now. She was blocking his view from the television. On another occasion, he wanted biscuits. What kind of biscuits, Fricks? One got that funny eye look before he, before he said. Excuse. What kind of biscuits, Fricks? One got that funny eye look before he could say, no, me want something not too sweet. Asha would laugh because she knew fully well what he was up to. So she asked, something sweet like what? He replied, vanilla biscuits. She continued with questions. Are you supposed to eat that? He responded with a tubes, followed by a long yes. And then Asha then said, okay. And as she was about to leave, he pointed a finger at her and commanded, make sure and buy the biscuit and come with it alone. That was said because he didn't want Candice to know. There are so many fun memories that we can share about Elmo, but time does not permit us. Elmo, or uncle, lived a simple, humble life, very affectionate, and we will certainly miss him. His life on earth is ended, but we know he is certainly in a better place, a place of peace where there is no more pain, something he habitually complained about. Farewell to a loving brother, uncle, cousin, and friend. Enjoy your sweet rest in the arms of God. Thank you. We now have our opening hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, as printed in our bulletin.
in the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who, are, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spread us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy upon us. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, and that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints for the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have the first reading of Scripture. everyone. First reading is taken from, oh sorry, good afternoon. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. Here beginning. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for spirits of heaviness, that they be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This is the end of the scripture reading. Rest in peace, uncle. We now sing the Psalm, Psalm 23. Psalm
the second reading. Good evening, Church. Good evening. The second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. If you know that he if you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right has been born of him. See what love the Father has given us, that we shall be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do is this, when he is revealed. We will be like him, for we will see him as he is. This is the end of the reading. We now sing the hymn, Because He Lives. We now stand and sing the hymn, Because He Lives.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Christ. And do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, this is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled, but believe in God, believe also in me. I share some thoughts with you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great things that we have, and one of the great benefits that we have as being Christians is that we have and we follow a Lord who was as much of a human being as each and every one of us. Yes, we serve a God and a Lord who was as human as me and as human as you. And the gospel according to John in chapter 1 tells us about uh, the word made flesh. That the word dwell among us. That the word was there at the beginning of creation and the word which is Christ. It gave up his divine nature in obedience to the father and took on this frail human form of ours. And because of this, Jesus had the benefit that he was able to experience a range of emotions that we also experience. He experienced love. He experienced joy. He experienced betrayal. He experienced pain. And he even experienced sadness at the death of a friend and someone close to him. So when Jesus speaks to us uh, and he speaks to, he speaks to us from a place of experience and a place of understanding. A place of understanding of who we are and what we feel and what are the challenges that we will face in this journey called life. So in times like these, in times of grief, in times of sadness, Jesus says to us in the gospel for today, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And you see this, that Jesus understands us and understands what we are going through in occasions like these. Occasions where we have lost someone. Occasions where we may experience pain. When we are facing the reality of death. 
He understood that there would be an occasion when our hearts will be troubled and when we would be uncertain of what we should do or what is the way forward. And because of this, and because he understands what we are going through, he knows that we as human beings have to and must believe in someone or in something. John 3, 16 tells us, sorry, that God so loved the world that he gave us his begotten son. And hence that we are called to believe in God and to believe in God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and to believe in God, we must come to know him. But we must also come to know our God and spend time to know this God of ours. This God who has created us, this God who loves us unconditionally, that in fact, that he sent his only begotten son. And that is why it is so important to remember that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever so believes in him will not perish, but have life eternal. And this was won for us on the cross. And we are able to experience eternal life in all its fullness and in the presence of God when this journey has come to an end. So we are called and we are invited in times like these to believe in God. And we are called to understand who God is and to recognize the extent of which God loves us and the extent of God's love for us. But the question is, how do we come to know God or how do we know our God? And we know God as we come to encounter him through scripture, by knowing his word. And as we encounter him through scripture, this is how we come to believe. And this is how we come to grow in faith. And as the Hebrew writer tells us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And faith allows us to have the assurances and the certainties. And what are those assurances and those certainties? Is that when we are certain that God is and that God exists, we are certain that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to give us an example of godly living, to show us how we can go to God in daily prayer and to come and to understand and to know what God's will and God's plan is for each and every one of us. And because of Christ, we can come to understand the extent of God's love for us. Christ who brought us into this new relationship with God through the power and the grace of reconciliation. It's Christ who brought the forgiveness and the ability to ask for forgiveness, and that forgiveness is guaranteed. And God raised him from the dead so that we may know that this great and awesome God we serve has power over life and over death. So those are the assurances that we have. 
We are assured of God's unconditional love. And we are sure of God's salvation for all of us. So our brother Elmo, as many may say, lived his life in the way that he wanted. And some of us may have agreed and some of us may not have agreed. But it is in our place to judge him. It is not our place. But it is up to God. And we know that we have a God who loves unconditionally. No matter how we may stray, how many times, God still loves us. Even if we go down the wrong path, he is still there and he still loves us and he still welcomes us with open arms. But it is not our place. And it is as the writers in Lamentation tells us is that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his compassion never fails. That every morning they are renewed. Amen. So our brother Elmo, he lived his life his own way. But I'm sure God still loves him the same. And he himself, because he lived his life, his own, showed love in his own particular way. His love for sports. I'm very passionate of sports, and I laughed when I hear you say that, because he'd rather the game get canceled than they lost the game. Exactly. That is the love. And even though he had a garden, and people may say he may be difficult at certain times, he still gave. And what that says... That he has love in his heart. So it doesn't matter what uh, many of us may think. Uh, or what opinions that we may have. Uh, but what we know is that God loves each and every one of us. And that is something that we cannot stop. God loves us unconditionally. And that is why Paul tells us in the book of Romans, he says that, I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor things present, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that is what it is. And that uh, is the truth, uh, and that is the fact. That loves, God's love is condition, unconditional. God's love never ceases, it never stops. And it, because of this love, that so we are called to believe in God and know that God that we have. So we are invited to believe in God, but to believe in Jesus Christ. A Christ who taught us that the most important thing is to love. And he summed up the Ten Commandments into two commandments, and that is what? Love for God and love for a neighbor. And that is love. And look at people who come out here to celebrate the life of Elmo. And that is love. That is love. And because of God's love, we have that gift of eternal life. And hence, this is why Jesus tells us in the gospel that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if we are, come to, if we are to come to know God and to build that relationship of, with God, by following the examples and the concepts of Jesus Christ, we are to follow him as true disciples. We may not all get it correctly. We may not get it 100% correctly. But there's some part of us, and each and every one of us, where we will get it right sometimes. And if ever we are not sure what this means, as we said, we can always turn back to the new commandment to love one another.
to love God and to love each other. And that was the type of love that Jesus had. Jesus loved us with a sacrificial love. Jesus loved us with an unending love. Jesus loved us with a love that was demonstrated in action. So if we are to truly follow Jesus, and we are to be called true disciples in Christ, that we are then called to follow him and follow by the example that he lived. And if that means by the simple task of giving whatever little that you had to other persons, that is living the way of God and Christ. We can't all, we can't expect that every time we will get it correct, we will get it correct 100% of the time. But God sees the little as well as he sees the big and grandiose thing. That is what we have before us. So in times like this, we are called to reflect on God's love for us. Our brother Elmore has gone. But because of the assurances of God's love, we are sure that he is in a better place. That we too we hope that God will have this unconditional love and mercy for all of us. And that one day that we will be able to see our brother Elmore again. And as they say, are we prepared for when our number has been called or when it is our time? to go to that dwelling place, that place that Christ has prepared for us. It is a time like these that we ought to be able to reflect and reflect upon our lives. So that when our time has reached, we see Christ and we say, Lord, Lord, and he too will welcome us with those open eyes. So the challenge for us now is to prepare ourselves. Our brother Elmore time has already come. So now it's for us to do the preparation and the work for ourselves for when that time has reached for us. And when God has decided to call all of us to be back with him. And that is what God has in store for us. So we pray for the repose of the soul of our brother Elmore. And we say, oh, brother Elmore, until we see again in this place that God has prepared for each and every one of us. In the name of God, who is Father, and of Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those who have a um, book of common prayer, those page three, six, six. Common prayer. We can all. Let us with con Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were all baptized, as we say, the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe. You will stand, please. Sorry, stand. You will stand. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. We are going to do some short intercessions, and these intercessions are found on page 368, the Book of Common Prayer. And the response to these intercessions are, uh, Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Grant to us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that the Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and to serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us. Grant to all who mourn, assure hope and confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in comfort, in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Elmo, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them, May he and all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. We will now pick up an offering, and our offertory hymn is, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Let us pray. Father, you are the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you for the kindness of your servants who give for the work and the mission in the world. Make us mindful of those who are without and cannot give, so that we can be a blessing to them. Accept the gifts of your people, and teach us how to use them for the sake of your kingdom. This we ask through Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and into the glorious company of your saints. Amen. Amen.
Zašto nam je taj razlog? I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, happy are the dead who died the faith of Christ. Henceforth, say the spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by your sin? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of death, of eternal death. You know the secret of our hearts, in the mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother Elmo, and we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace 
to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your beloved son shall come again in judgment both this our brother Elmo and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight grant this for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord Amen the Lord be with you also. Almighty God, with whom still lives the spirit of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may be have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. Amen. Let light perpetual shine on him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen Father in heaven, you gave your son Jesus Christ to suffer and to the death of the Lord. Raise him to life in glory. Grant us patience made in time of darkness and strengthen our hearts with the knowledge of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, by whose mercy and grace your saints remain in everlasting life and peace. Remember with thanksgiving those whom we love but no longer see. And we pray that in them you may be first protect your will, it may be faith to be perfect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant eternal rest unto him, O Lord. May light perpetual shine upon you. May he and all the faithful that departed through the mercy of God rest.